in the spring of 2020, with schools fully remote and many graduations put on hold, WCVB celebrated outstanding high school seniors from across the state. We wanted to make sure some deserving seniors still get a shout out. But students who have adapted and thrived during the pandemic are only part of a more complicated picture. I've heard the number that we're worried about 20% of the population sort of being lost in this new uh, method of either hybrid or fully remote learning. Consultant Lynn Reeves Griffin works with schools and parents on issues of student engagement. The 20% she referenced is consistent with the New York Times report that remote learning has contributed to a decrease in student attendance across the country. And that doesn't surprise me because we've got about uh, 15 to 20% vulnerability in mental health in teenagers in general. It would track that our most vulnerable students are going to have the most difficulty with the transition. Numbers vary by region, but one thing is clear. Students who attend schools in lower income areas, such as Boston's Dearborn STEM Academy, are at higher risk, a trend that guidance counselor Tim Lukoski has witnessed firsthand. We are seeing a lot of students are struggling right now. Even some of our top students are having a tough time staying engaged, and we're concerned about a few of them uh, not making it at this point just because they've started to, to slowly um, fall off the radar. Everyone's struggling more, everyone's more stressed, and yet we maintain the same expectations. Your expectations around behavior, your expectations around engagement have to be adjusted. We should not normalize the crisis. Despite the pandemic, social unrest, and a country in transition, many teachers across the state have taken these challenges head on. We met one teacher who seems to have been born for this moment. My mom's a teacher, my grandma was a teacher. My name is Lindsay McAfee. I teach English as a second language at the Jeremiah Burks High School in Boston. As an urban school in a poor neighborhood, the Burke has faced challenges, including once falling under state control as a turnaround school. The Burke was the first school in Massachusetts to actually lift itself out of turnaround status. I'm really proud of the school that I work at and of my colleagues. And they're proud of her, bringing her to Chronicle's attention for her outstanding work keeping English language learners engaged. Just saying hi, good morning to someone if you don't feel comfortable pronouncing those words can be a really scary thing. So to better understand that fear, McAfee learned Cape Verdean Creole. It's been wonderful. I think at first they're like, oh my God, miss, because for many they might not have ever heard uh, Cape Verdean Creole with a non-native speaker's accent. So they're like, what is she saying? Seeing students open up has been a really beautiful thing. Welcome to my remote learning ESL classroom. Though many would agree that there is no way to replace the advantages of in-person learning by working remotely, McAfee has found a bright side. They can see my face, they see me smiling every morning at them and speaking to them. If you could teach anyone your language, who would you choose? It's really easy to hyper-focus on the tools and the technology, and let's put that to, to the side and really focus on creating exciting, dynamic classrooms where students can really prepare for the real world. To me, that's the core of what we're doing. Municipal. Uh, municipal, that makes sense. Number municipal. Schools have different procedures for keeping students from falling off the grid. A few of them even reported their concerns to child welfare aid officials, according to a recent Boston Globe report. Now, Lynn Griffin says ideally schools would have a strong enough support plan in place to avoid having to take that step. Coming up, young news reporters meet newsmakers.